lesson 7.4, we're going to divide by 3. And if you've seen the previous videos for chapter 7, which is all about division facts and strategies, this will seem to make a lot of sense to you because we're going to use some of the same strategies. When we divide by 3, we can make 3 equal groups or groups that each contain 3. There are several strategies that we can use to divide by 3. We can use counters and make equal groups. We can count back on a number line. We can use skip counting to count up. And we can use related facts and a multiplication table. We can draw counters and make equal groups to divide by 3. Our problem is 12 divided by 3. We make 12 little counters. We circle groups of 3, then we count how many groups we made. We have 4 groups, 12 divided by 3 is equal to 4. We can count back on a number line to divide by 3. So remember, when we're multiplying on a number line, we count up. When we're dividing, we count back. We have 12 divided by 3. We start at the dividend 12 right here. And we make jumps of 3 back towards 0, and we count how many jumps we made. We make sure the scale is correct for us to skip count back, to jump back, and we went back 3, then another 3, then another 3, and then another 3. We made 4 jumps. That means 12 divided by 3 is equal to 4. So counting back is like repeated subtraction. We were at 12, and we took away 3. Now we're at 9. We take away 3 more, we're at 6. We take away 3 more, we're at 3. We take away 3 more, we're at 0. It's like repeated subtraction. We can find a quotient by skip counting up by 3's until we get to the dividend. We count how many times we counted up. We have 18 divided by 3. We count up skip counting by 3's. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, until we get to 18, our dividend. We count how many times? We skip counted. We did 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times. We know 18 divided by 3 is equal to 6. We can actually do this to find any quotient. We can divide by 3 using related facts that we already know, or by using a multiplication table. Our problem is 18 divided by 3. We find the column for 3, and we follow it down until we see the dividend 18. 18 is our dividend. When we find the 18, we go across to find the unknown factor. It's a 6. So we know 18 divided by 3 is equal to 6. We can also find the row for 3 right here and follow it across to 18 and then go up to find an unknown factor. So either way, and we can do that because of the commutative property of multiplication, right? It says that we can multiply in any order and get the same product. We can use a related multiplication fact because division and multiplication are opposite operations. They are inverse operations. They undo each other. We learned about that in video 6.7 in the last chapter, and there's a link to that video in the description if you missed it. We have 24 divided by 3. We need to find the quotient. So we think 3 times some number is equal to 24. The missing factor will be our quotient. If you remember that 3 times 8 is equal to 24, we know that our quotient is an 8. We also know that we can do division problems this way with a division bracket, can't we? This is 24 divided by 3, and it's equal to 8. We see how many times 3 will fit into the 24. We can use reasoning to decide which sign belongs in the number sentence to make it true. Are we going to use a plus sign, a minus sign, a multiplication sign, or a division sign? We solve one side to help us decide which sign to use for the other side. 
We don't know what sine belongs in here, but it's going to be equal to whatever this side is, and 2 times 3 is equal to 6. That means this side needs to be equal to 6. So which sign can we put in here to make this side equal to 6? Do you know? 30 divided by 5 is equal to 6. We want both sides to be equal to each other because there's an equal sign there. How about this one? We've got 6, and we don't know what the operation is, but we have a 2, and it's equal to 24 divided by 3. 24 divided by 3 is 8. That means this side of the equal sign must be equal to 8. So which one of these operation signs should we put here to make this equal 8? If you said the plus sign, you're right, because 6 plus 2 is equal to 8. We solve one side of the equal sign to help us decide what sign to use for the other side. And keep working on your multiplication facts for 6, because by the end of this chapter, you should have them memorized as quickly as you know that 1 plus 1 is 2. We're going to finish this lesson with a word problem that involves using information from a table. It says students chose a book to make a book report. And the teacher put the students into groups of three. How many more groups did a report on James and the Giant Peach than for the enormous egg? So let's look at our table. It's called Book Reports. Here's the book titles, The Enormous Egg, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, and James and the Giant Peach. And the number of students who did book reports on this, there were nine for The Enormous Egg, six for Diary of a Wimpy Kid, and 15 for James and the Giant Peach. We need to know how many more groups of three did a report on James and the Giant Peach than for The Enormous Egg. So first, we need to find how many groups there are for each book. There's 15 students, and they're in groups of three for James and the Giant Peach. So we do 15 students divided by three in each group. That tells us there were five groups doing a book report on James and the Giant Peach. For the enormous egg, there's nine students. Nine students divided by three in each group is equal to three groups. We needed to find how many more groups did a report on James and the Giant Peach than the Enormous Egg. There were five groups doing James and the Giant Peach, three doing reports on the Enormous Egg. We subtract to find the difference of the number of groups. There's two groups more that wrote a report on James and the Giant Peach than the Enormous Egg. Now, do you see the unnecessary information in the table? Do you see some information that was just not needed, but it's there? If you said the information on Diary of a Wimpy Kid and that six students were doing a report on that, you're right. It didn't even mention that in the word problem, did it? So sometimes in word problems, there's unnecessary information that we just need to ignore. That's why it helps to circle important numbers or underline important facts. So when we divide by 3, we can make 3 equal groups, or groups that each contain 3. And we can use a lot of the strategies that we used for dividing by other numbers that we've learned so far, like using counters and making equal groups, or counting back on a number line, or skip counting to count up, using a multiplication table, and related facts. I hope you have a great day. I hope you're doing well. I hope this is okay for you and you're able to follow along, and I'll see you for our next lesson. Bye.